when Ben Ramsey, the writer of this film, had to apologize for this, we're off to a bad start. According to Wikipedia, in 2016, Ramsey issued a public apology for the film, claiming the film marked a very painful creative point in his life. He writes, to have something with my name on it as the writer to be so globally reviled is gut-wrenching. To receive hate mail from all over the world is heartbreaking. I went into the project chasing after a big payday, not as a fan of the franchise, but as a businessman taking on an assignment. I have learned that when you go into creative endeavor without passion, you come out with suboptimal results and sometimes flat out garbage. So I'm not blaming anyone for Dragon Ball Evolution, but myself. No one should have to suffer harassments for something they aren't proud of in their career. We've all turned in half-hearted work, but to publicly admit to this essentially being a cash grab by Hollywood, even from the writer, it was doomed from the start. Look at the title alone. Dragon Ball has always been two words. But let's get something out of the way early. I have said, and have heard others say, that if you strip away all names and properties and ties in this that relate to Dragon Ball, it could be a fun adventure. That could be true, but I can't entertain that because it's not the case. And it's a poor defense for a bad movie and one of, if not the worst adaption ever put to screen. When this came out in 2009, I was so excited, but also nervous. Who wouldn't be? Anime doesn't usually translate well to live action, which is not as true nowadays. But we arrived to the theater and the projector had kicked on 30 minutes early, so the movie had started. We got refunded and tickets to come back at the next showing. If this wasn't the Lord trying to warn me to see this movie, nah, I missed it. I remember laughing during it, having some fun, smiling a couple times and it ending and being like, well, that, that could have been worse, right? It's good because it's Dragon Ball, it's good. Despite the inconsistencies in the story and massive plot holes throughout the film, my buddy and I talked about what was good and hoped for a sequel to improve what we didn't like. Fast forward a little bit, just so you know, my dad does not like DBC. He never has. Majin Buu drives him crazy. And in my effort to get him to like it, within a year of it coming out, I had gotten the DVD for like four bucks, which was another bad sign. And we watched it and he liked it way more than the show. But he doesn't know that much about the show and doesn't like what he's seen. So in a way that makes sense. And I can see others with a similar background being more positive for this movie. Maybe it's just a fun adventure film to them, but it's still an adaption of a beloved property. And then a discussion came with my friend. He had sort of realized what we were doing before I did. We were so hopeful and so desperate for new DBZ content and a big screen movie. We were doing whatever we could to make ourselves believe it was a good movie. I even defended it a bit to him. Well, he realized this, but deep down, I knew he was right. I steered clear of rewatching this for probably 12 years, slowly resenting it more and more and more. And then seeing how blasted it got and the sequels being canned made me a little sad because I knew at the time we may never get another chance for this franchise and the one movie they release gets it so wrong that we probably won't ever get another one. It got me thinking in the last year or two after having long gotten rid of the DVD and going through all this DBZ content again, is it as bad as I remember? Or was I being an unfair fan with adaptions? So I bought the Blu-ray and decided to give it another fair chance, especially after watching the bootleg 90s Asian live action films, which are terrible, but faithful in their own regard. And so I did. Well, it's actually worse than I remember. I'm gonna rapid fire through a couple higher level things first. The production design is incredibly bland and sometimes cheap looking for a Hollywood film that's got a $30 million budget. The VFX are either plain terrible or strangely off from what they're trying to portray, such as the key blast that look like fire and air and not energy beams. The action is edited to death with obvious wire foo and rushed set pieces bogged down by horrific CGI and over editing. The acting is done no favors by the cliche ridden, cringeworthy script that ends up being nonsensical in just about every conceivable way story-wise. There's a ton of plot holes and it's a shame because there are inspired casting choices here. James Marsters as King Piccolo and Chow Yun-Fat as Master Roshi are absolutely perfect choices for this role and they're probably the best portions of the movie. Emmy Rosam is a good choice for Wilma and the guy who plays Yamcha looks and sounds just like him aside from the hair. Jamie Chung's likability and let's be honest, Good looks make Chi Chi very endearing. And then there's Justin Chatwin. The guy does the best he can with what he's given, which is admirable, but he feels more like Gohan in his high school arc and somewhat resembles him more so too. 
but there's some Peter Parker vibes there. And it's not that his acting is bad, it's a little bit wooden, but everything I just described to you is not the character of Son Goku. And I don't mean his race. Goku probably should be portrayed by an Asian actor given Toriyama's influences from Sun Wukong of Journey to the West, but at the end of the day, he's an alien, so it doesn't really truly matter. But Toriyama also saw Jackie Chan as the embodiment of Goku. And so when comparing this to Fight Son Goku, Win Son Goku, or The Magic Begins, it's obvious that this one is more watchable and will retain your attention, just given Hollywood filmmaking practices. But it's not faithful at all. It's completely missing the spirit of the franchise and mistakes it for an entirely different genre. Mixing in the Smallville high school approach with Superman and John Hughes influences-esque high school scenes are a betrayal to the character of Goku and his entire backstory. It feels wrong. And that's the fickle thing about adaptions. If you change too much, you lose any trust right out of the gate. But if you change too little, you're called boring and too faithful. There's a balance there. And while evolution has the guise of trying to balance things out with references, name drops, and other lore elements that give the subtle mask of being faithful, it's a lie. And it can't make up for the fact that this has no idea what makes Dragon Ball so beloved as a franchise. The fact that the action scenes alone are so dry and the humor is so bland is telling. Oh my gosh. When your creative approach fundamentally changes everything about the lead character of Goku, who was raised in isolation, and that helps inform his free-spirited, innocent, pure heart to a bully teenager who is yearning to get away from his grandpa and find out how to pursue girls, then the entire framework of the story comes into question. There's no need to try to understand character because there isn't the character. Whatever semblance of an arc he has here, and he does have one, I will give it that, is cliche ridden. It's very obvious from the start. They tell you everything you need to know. Then they try to throw in this last minute twist that doesn't really make any sense with Goku being the Uzaru. And don't even get me started on that insult of the transformation, the CGI, and how tiny it is, and why it only lasts two seconds in the movie. This character arc, per se, not only ignores everything about the character, but what it does do is act as a continual, not so subtle slap to the face. Not just because you see it coming, but the film tricks you into being entertained by using tropes to emotionally manipulate you into excusing it. Well, it's an adaption. Well, they're trying to make it more relatable. No, we don't get Goku, so let's make him relatable by standing up to bullies. Is it one of the more fun scenes? Sure, but it's also wholly wrong for what this movie could have been. And they rush and amalgate the biggest arcs of Dragon Ball on top of twists from early on in DBZ, so much so that it makes no sense. They just shoved everything in here. If Goku is the Uzaro as an infant that helped Piccolo, why did he send him there to be raised by an enemy for 18 years? And I'm just, I can't. I really do love the role of Piccolo here, and he's, as I mentioned earlier, he's one of the saving graces, as, and his mid-credits scene actually had me intrigued with what they would do with him in the future. Maybe they could fix it, right? And Chow Yun Fat was an inspired choice again who just nails the role. So they could fix it with future films, right? No, there was no saving this. It makes me sad that they're in this dumpster fire with such a lifeless direction. And the director, one of the big creatives on the X-Files. Ultimately, Hollywood needs to consider several things when it comes to adaptions especially like this. First off, let's be honest. Don't be afraid to change some things so they translate better. Be sure to tell a good story. Feel free to subvert, but also deliver fan expectations. This is a stroke too far, to the point where it's one of the lowest rated movies on Letterboxd and considered one of, if not the worst film of the decade it came out in. And as far as mainstream Hollywood film goes, it's probably up there with the worst of that too. It's ironic that the trailers in front of this Blu-ray were The Legend of Chun Li, the Street Fighter one. Terrible movie, it's even worse than this. And X-Men Origins Wolverine, which a lot of people hate. I sort of enjoy it, but it has an awesome trailer. I feel bad for the careers that this affected, but what were they honestly hoping to achieve? How could they think this would create new fans while just dismissing everything important to the franchise? There's no sense of true character beyond cliches. There's no major big fights that last more than two seconds. It's, the humor's cringeworthy and story arcs are thrown in at random just against the wall. It's truly a poor understanding of the source material. But on the other hand, there's a bigger lesson here because I'm thankful for this film. When Nakira Toriyama learned of it and saw it, it inspired him to come back to Dragon Ball and create Battle of Gods and later Dragon Ball Super. And now we've had this DBZ renaissance of sorts that can all be traced back to evolution. Not a sentence I ever expected to say that the Dragon Ball renaissance started with evolution. Adaptions should always be taken more loosely and be given grace. 
while also having every right to be critiqued at the same level of other films. But singling out something just because it doesn't get everything right versus singling out something because it gets too much right has got to be balanced. This is the case of point of every single decision backfiring on an elevated scale that makes the populace united in their disgust for this film and how wrong it was. And yet, because of Hollywood's callous attempt at shameless wallet emptying proved one thing, Dragon Ball fans are loud, proud, and will fight for the creator to be honored. So much so, he was sprung back into action, giving us a whole new decade of DBZ. The ramifications of adaptions, both good or bad, can have a ripple effect on the industry in ways we can't imagine. No one saw that coming with this film. So the lesson in adaptions here with this particular film is one of thankfulness. Thank you, Dragon Ball Evolution, for being such a disgrace. Your outright shamefulness and poor excuse of cinema brought back one of the greatest franchises ever. Thanks for sucking. Apparently we needed it. I give Dragon Ball Evolution 0.5 a one half star out of five stars. I probably shouldn't even mention this, but I will. There was a video game adaption of this movie on PSB called Dragon Ball Evolution, and it's essentially a Budokai clone. And it's fun. I enjoy playing it. The art style is decent, the mechanics are fun, and it's got the characters from the movies, so it's still heresy, but I enjoy playing it. And guys, I hope you know, I really did try. And there are things worth mentioning in this movie that were good. So if you ever watch it again, remember what it brought about. Remember that people make mistakes and we shouldn't hate the person for it, but we can criticize the art. So always look for the good.